Hello, my name's Christina, and I will be your server this evening. Can I interest you in any of the specials? Tonight we have a trigger warning. Yeah, you want to hear more about that? Okay, even though this podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, sometimes we'll be talking about not-so-good mental health things like depression, anxiety, and the fact that we're all gonna die. Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast. Now that this is episode four, is that just officially the theme song? Is that a bad thing? Is it weird that I kind of like it? Literally the first royalty-free song I clicked on. (laughs) Hi, I'm Christina Wolfgram. I'm an internet comedian and human being. And in today's episode, I'm going to write my will, as in my last will and testament. As some of you know, I actually planned on launching this podcast later this year, but under the circumstances, I was like, no, I think now's the time. I'm seeing in the signs. And I already had this episode planned and I've been working on it for actually months. I'm perfectly healthy, so... Why am I writing my will today of all days? Well, one of the biggest hurdles in my mental health journey has been acceptance. Accepting that I'm always going to have to be dealing with depression. Accepting that I'm never going to be a natural blonde. And accepting my own mortality is one that hasn't been super easy. (laughs) In last week's podcast, I talked about how when I was a kid and I was afraid of something, particularly a movie, I would watch the movie again and again and again in an effort to understand or be able to know enough about the scary thing that it would not be scary anymore. And that's something that I've been doing in the past few years, but about death. A few years ago, I had a family member pass away, and one of the things about the experience that really stuck with me was that I didn't understand how to grieve. I come from a Catholic family, and Catholic funerals are, I think, what you would call a traditional funeral. So it was open casket, oh god, candles and singing and and talking about heaven and Jesus. And I could tell it was really comforting to a lot of people. And that was wonderful. But but I kind of had to find my own way of coping. And it's actually taken years. <laughs> and there's a person who has really helped in my journey. And her name is Caitlin Doty. She is one of the founders of The Good Death. She has she has her own funeral home in Los Angeles and she's been making YouTube videos for years, making herself kind of a spokesperson for what she calls death positivity. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you have to be like, yay, we're all gonna die. <laughs> Great, I'm so happy about it. Because, I mean... If you're human, which I think you probably are, like, I don't know you, but just guessing, your brain isn't really wired to be excited about death. (laughs) In fact, it's wired to avoid it in every capacity. So something I loved about Caitlin was that she just shares facts and facts I can understand because she is a mortician, that's where a lot of her knowledge comes from. But first of all, she's so cool. She has very good bangs. I trust someone who can take care of bangs, okay? And she's super smart. She's written three books. And her goal is to change how people, especially Americans, view death. These are things I've just learned from watching her channel, but over time, Our relationship with death has become sort of a long distance relationship. It's not very common that you find yourself in a room with a dead body 
when our relatives die, we are not preparing the body or digging a grave or anything like that. Oof. It's been super hard trying to figure out a way to put words to this feeling, but even though I still feel scared and I still feel anxious and I still feel kind of this overpowering mystery around death, learning from an expert like Caitlin has really qualmed my fears because I've learned what I can take control of. And what happens to my body and my stuff after I pass on is one of them. It's been tough moving forward with this episode because we're all being inundated with, I don't know, the idea of our own mortality, the life of our loved ones, the health and safety of basically everyone in the world. So I don't want to focus on the scary stuff. I want to focus on what we can control. And that's why I've decided to move forward with this episode. If thinking about death is is a big trigger for you, I don't think this is a video for you. I highly recommend checking out Caitlin's channel. Her videos are super bite-sized. I just watched one after the other. One of my absolute favorite videos by Caitlin is a video called, Why Are You Afraid of Death? <laughs> And she has this brilliant analogy where she describes the fears about death as this giant pizza and that you can't possibly just roll up the pizza and eat it all at the same time. It helps if you cut it into slices. And she walks you through an exercise that helps you basically slice up your worries. And she explains seven of the most common anxieties about death. After doing that exercise, I realized that my two biggest fears are one, that my death would cause grief to my loved ones, and two, what would happen to all my professional plans and my ambitions and my goals? You know, what will happen to all my diaries? (laughs) So I am making a plan and I've been thinking about it for a very long time, and this is just a way to make it official. If this sounds like something that might comfort you, maybe uh, we can write our wills together. So grab a pen and paper. It sounds like I'm doing a beauty tutorial. Grab a pen, paper, and a mirror, and let's get started. (laughs) Just in case you're like, oh, but I have all these uncomfortable feelings about writing a will. I am right with you. Trust me, I wrote down some of the weird feelings I was having just in case it helps you. First of all, writing a will means you're admitting that you're going to die, which is super weird. And even though death is maybe the most natural thing in the world because it happens to literally everybody, it's uh, hard to wrap your brain around. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. It means you have to take stock of what you own and what you've accomplished I think when I say accomplished, I mean in a very material way. You know, I I always imagine that my will would read something like this. <clears throat> and to my second husband, I leave my yacht. To my daughter, I leave my very expensive collection of glass cut ornaments and any leftover French face creams. To my butler, I leave nothing but my summer home and the memories of our affair last year. You know what I mean? Like, I I would want the lawyer to read the will and like, it's like, dun, 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 something like that. But really my my will is going to be like, the only thing I have a lot of is student debt. So sorry, everybody. (laughs) But something that I would like to focus on is not just passing on my material objects is to leave behind some comfort because if one of my fears is that I'm gonna hurt people I love by passing on then I want to leave a little bit of comfort and I definitely want to make things as easy as possible. I have heard a lot of stories of horrible situations where 
people might die young or people die without making any plans and it leaves their family in kind of an awful position where they have to make these you know decisions when they're at the height of their grief and shock something that caitlin have i mentioned that i love caitlin doty something that caitlin explains really well in her first book smoke gets in your eyes is how the funeral industry is designed to be a moneymaker. And I won't get into that. Well, maybe I will. Who knows? Because some of it was so shocking. And I would never, ever want my loved ones to be spending money on like some fancy party that I don't even get to go to. Like I'd much rather they buy like some new sunglasses or like a house or like some cat beds or, you know, some things they can actually enjoy. A ticket to London. Yeah, you get it. And the last thing that's hard about writing your last will and testament is that it brings up some very metaphysical ideas like, do dogs go to heaven? And is hell hot or is it cold? Like, should I bring a sweater? Or, you know, is this kind of a tank top situation? Just want to know how to dress? Or is this going to just be like the best nap I've ever taken? That, that doesn't sound so bad. But like Caitlin said, it's really good to slice that pizza up, that worry pizza covered in anchovies and ghosts. And we're just going to take some little nibbles. Does that sound okay? Okay. Okay, good. Thank you for being here with me. Something I'm excited about that I didn't tell you at the beginning of this episode is that because you're here with me, you're actually serving as my witness. I have not spoken to a lawyer about whether or not that counts. However... In the state of California, if your will is handwritten and you sign it and date it, it counts as a holographic will. <laughs> so I think it's going to count, whatever. I'm actually going to use a website called joincake.com. I actually discovered it through one of Caitlin's videos that's about protecting your rights as an LGBTQ person after your death, which is so cool. I actually went on the website at first just to support them. And uh, then when I started looking around, I was like, oh, I'm totally going to use this to uh, create the files that my butler will have to go through after I'm gone. <clears throat> Let's sign in. If you're following me on Instagram, you know that right before quarantine started, I borrowed my best friend Abby's iPad and thus I have had it for about six weeks now. <laughs> and I love it for many reasons, uh, particularly the ability to use Procreate, but also for this giant screen. So you can see what I'm doing if you're watching on YouTube. So I created a profile on joincake.com. The first recommended prompts are actually about funeral, which I'm not as worried about today because I want to get the more official stuff out of the way. They give a lot of recommendations, which I like because like, for instance, since I've only gone to Catholic funerals, I just know that I don't want that, <laughs> but I've had to kind of do some research to figure out what I do want. And Caitlin's book From Here to Eternity really helped me with that. And also doing some weird Googling. But I could have just been looking here because it says, I really like these prompts. It says, I don't want a funeral. If possible, I want my funeral to take place before I die so I can attend. I never thought of that. I mean, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Cause like it would be very Tom Sawyer of you. Remember, I never read Tom Sawyer. I only saw the movie with Jonathan Taylor Thomas, but I do remember that he watched his own funeral and he was like, so cute. Am I remembering that right? I. <laughs> anyway, at my celebration of life, tell stories, laugh, serve good wine and beer. I also like that. I want a Viking funeral. <laughs> Unfortunately, I actually, I, I think Viking funerals are illegal. That's something that I didn't know. <laughs> there are certain things that you're not allowed to do like burn a body on not sanctioned land or water. If that's something you really, really want, you might be able to find a certain place where the laws are different. I know there's like one specific town in Colorado where you can have 
an outdoor pyre. So you can have a funeral that's kind of like, do you remember in the last Lord of the Rings movie when the king like ate all those tomatoes really gross and he kind of lost his mind and then he was burning his son alive and then was it Mary or, or Pippin? And then the hobbit who can sing is like, no, he's still alive and he jumps on the pyre. Well, you can have that. You could reenact that if, if you so choose, but only in this like one particular town. So that's just because of the laws. Hashtag laws. Okay, so here are some other choices that I have. I can figure out what I want for my funeral, my legacy, my health, and legal and financial. And then they also have a way to find all of the documents and files that your state requires. So I think California, which is where I plan on living and dying, has like your own will paperwork that you have to fill out and sign. So I guess I'll be doing that. I don't think I want to start with how to remember me because it takes me like five weeks to write one tweet. So maybe I'll save that. I'll uh, let that stew in my little brain a little bit. Let's do health. Wow. Okay. So I clicked on health and it just gives me four prompts, which is amazing. Am I an organ donor? Yes. Do you remember that movie? What is it called? I think it's called Come Back to Me, where I believe David De- Covney loses his wife in a car accident and then her heart gets transplanted into Minnie Driver and then he and Minnie Driver fall in love and then she's like I had a heart transplant and he's like oh my god you're my wife's heart and then I'm pretty sure they end up together spoiler alert I'm pretty sure they end up together okay which healthcare documents do you have oh okay so this is where I'm gonna Download state forms like my advanced directive. Okay, what is a healthcare proxy form? It's who you trust to make medical decisions if you can't speak for yourself. I watched an interview with Alua Arthur, who is a lawyer, end of life planner, and death doula. As in, she's so brave and smart that she can help people and their families at the end of their lives. It's extremely cool. She said that when you're trying to figure out who your healthcare proxy should be, um, you should choose the person who you would trust to go into Chipotle and come out with your correct order. Because that's someone who knows you. That's love. And then the advanced directive and living will form. So that's what I would want regarding the care at the end of your life. And then you can also do an M-O-L-S-T, P-O-L-S-T form, a form that your doctor fills out with you. That's a medical order stating what treatments you do or do not want if it becomes clear you're nearing the end of your life. Hmm. I do think I want a big screen and I want Bugs Bunny cartoons playing like full blast. I guess I'll write that in there. Okay. So I'm going to click on California. Wow. This is so cool. Oh. Beach. Okay, it says, do your end of life planning with cake. Oh, because they're trying to make it a piece of cake. <laughs> That's so sweet. Okay, very nice. Who needs a healthcare proxy form? Everyone 18 and older should have a healthcare proxy form. I'm not saying that to scare you. I just read the website. I'm not the boss of you. Eh, but it's something to think about. Download California living will, California advanced directive. Whew. This looks very lawyery. This is overwhelming. I'm glad we're doing it together because there's a lot of words here and I don't really want to read them. Okay. I kind of skipped ahead. Don't tell anyone. And this is the form you want to fill out if you want to make anatomical gifts. So I guess it's like if I want to send my hand to someone. Ooh, it'd be so crazy if I sent my heart in a box to, like, my third husband or something. (laughs) No, that's so bad. No, no, no. I'd much rather it go to someone who needs it. So, part one, power of attorney for healthcare. Already talked about this with my boyf, and we have decided that he's going to be my power of attorney. I guess you should ask people... It's kind of like asking someone to be your bridesmaid. Like, 
make it fun, make it special. Buy them like a terrible t-shirt that says, will you be my power of attorney? (laughs) Oh my God, should I make that t-shirt? I didn't know this, but death requires a lot of forms, like a lot of forms. And also just a reminder, if you don't feel like filling out all this fancy paperwork, you can just write it on a post-it, sign it, date it, voila, holographic will. I like that it's holographic, like Xenon's earring or something. Okay, this is a weird one that I've been thinking about a lot. End of life decisions. So it's where you decide whether or not you want them to like keep you on a tube and stuff, which is really hard because you hear these stories like, yeah, he was a vegetable, but then he was on this tube and then all of a sudden he woke up and ran a marathon, but... I think I'm not going to prolong. And then, oh, you get to decide if you want to donate your organs. Yeah, totally. Uh, That sounds great to me. I already have that on my driver's license, but I guess you put it here too. Oh, interesting. My gift is for the, my gift. Oh, they call it, they call it a gift. That's so sweet. Oh, my gift is for the following purposes. Transplant therapy, research, education. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with all those. Okay, and then you sign it, and then you have to sign it. Oh, and then you have to have two witnesses sign it. Oh, so I guess you can't count as a witness. (sighs) I guess that makes sense. Doing, like, a virtual will doesn't make it count. That's something that happens in movies a lot, where they, like, make a video, and they're like, Hello, family. If you're seeing this, I am dead. (laughs) Or I have faked my own death. Diane, I'm leaving you nothing. Something like that. Okay, and then it says, critical step. Share your completed document. Exclamation point. Your document is only helpful if people know where to find it if it is needed. Okay, so I won't hide it behind a painting, I guess. Or maybe I'll just hide it there, but I'll let people know that's where it is. Okay, it's important to discuss the decisions outlined in your document with anyone you designate to act on your behalf in a health emergency. When is it a good time to talk about death? Literally never. It's never a good time. It's always, I think, the same amount of... But if you're healthy and you're of sound mind, thanks to Lexapro, then call up your best friend and say, Hey, do you think you could handle talking about death for a few minutes? I, I have a very important question to ask you. Will you be my power of attorney. <laughs> I love you so much. Okay. I learned a lot. Did you le- did you learn a lot? I did. Okay. What is a HIPAA release form? While not an advanced directive, this important form allows you to designate specific people that can obtain necessary information about your medical condition. This actually scares me because I have a long-term partner, but we're not married and I get so scared that one of us will be in the hospital and the other person won't be able to come in or something. And then my boyfriend will have to pretend to be my brother. And then if I get better and then we start making out, like all the doctors will be super confused or, you know, it just opens the door for so many misunderstandings. Okay, now I'm going to download a HIPAA release form. I, Christina Wolfgram, give my permission for my boyfriend, John Mullaney, to share the imp- information listed in section two of this document, blah, blah, blah. Seriously, sometimes I look at forms and it just looks like blah, 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 blah to me, which is bad because I consider myself a pretty good reader. <laughs> Do you think will writing parties could be a thing? Should I have one? Okay. And then the last thing says physician orders for life-sustaining treatment I don't want to get into that. No, see, this is things it's important to note. When something feels super hard, you don't have to make yourself do it right now. Like, I'm not going to make myself do this right now, but I am going to tell a loved one that I have to do it. So then they're like, Christina, did you do it? You know, it worked really well when my mom was potty training me. She said that if I didn't pee my pants for like, I don't know, a month or something that I could get the magic haircut Barbie, which was the Barbie who came with extensions so you could cut her hair and then put the extensions back on. And 
uh, that was a great motivator for me. As far as I know, I haven't peed my pants since. And when I got that Barbie, I immediately cut all of her hair off. And then I put the extensions on and I cut those two and it felt great. So maybe what I need to do <laughs> is promise myself a treat for when I finish all these forms. What's a good treat? I've already been helping myself plenty to baked goods, so that's no longer a treat. It's just my normal sustenance. Maybe like some face cream? Wow. Okay, so that's all of the... So that's all of the health stuff. Okay, let's look at digital. Oh, these are really... <laughs> these are hard questions. These are like worse than SAT questions. Okay, what do you want to happen to your email accounts when you die? <laughs> Oh, the person who ends up responsible for my email accounts is going to be so shocked because I am the most unorganized emailer ever. And I think currently I have over 5,000 emails in my inbox because I don't clean it out. What are you going to do? So who would be oddly satisfied with that? That's something I really feel like I should like ask. <laughs> like, do you want this responsibility? Because I think the first order of business would be to select all like every single email in my inbox, and then press delete. I think that'd be really satisfying. And then I think go into my contacts, do an email, CC every single one of my contacts, and send the following message. Hello, this is Christina. If you're reading this, I am dead. If you don't send this email to 20 people <laughs> in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to tickle your nose when you're asleep every night. You will be cursed for all of eternity. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, maybe just delete all the emails. Oh, no, maybe I should make an away message. Like, hey, you've reached Christina's email, but I'm like not here right now or ever again because I really hope I don't have to answer emails in the afterlife. Thank you. Let's move on. What do you want to happen to your digital files and photos when you die? Honestly, like, I think you should just find all the bad pictures of me and make a slideshow. Just, like, to have a laugh. Like, I don't care. What do you want to happen to your social media media accounts when you die? Oof. Last year, I had a really weird but eye-opening experience because on one of the ASMR channels that I've been subscribed to forever, uh, out of the blue, there was a video that was like, hey, this is so-and-so's sister, and I just wanted to let you know that she passed away and she's actually been sick for a while and she really loved you guys and okay bye and it hit me so hard <laughs> i don't know maybe if i hadn't dealt with some other grief that i had from losing other people who i actually knew in person and was close to but i don't know why i, I just cried and cried and I revisit her videos a lot. I don't want to say it's like a shrine because that's not it. But it's like, it's almost like we have memories that we made together. And I've been so lucky to have some videos that a lot of people have seen. And I think in a way, we, me as the creator and them as an audience have experienced together. So I never want them to go away. But also, is it weird and creepy if they're still on the internet. Although some of those videos, like my hair is the best it's ever going to look. My makeup is sensational because I spent a ton of time doing my eyelashes. So yeah, just keep everything up, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'll just let Mr. run my social media accounts. See, even going through this checklist, I realized that I still have some really big decisions to make. It's not that big of a decision. And then it says... What do you want to happen to your digital assets, those worth money when you die? Yeah, there are some internet things that I do that make a little bit of money. So I'd probably want that donated. Like every time you buy a Crying is Cool shirt, the money goes to the Mr. Foundation. Oh, I'm going to have to start a foundation. That's going to be a lot of forms. Okay. I'm actually feeling super overwhelmed and... I feel like I need to share that with you guys in case you feel overwhelmed by this stuff. You're not alone. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to go quickly through the legal and financial. Do you have life insurance? <laughs> yeah, beach. Uh, this girl just got approved for life insurance like several weeks ago. 
It was one of the weirdest things I've ever done. Um, did you know that when you apply for life insurance, a random person, it's not a random person. I mean, it's a doctor comes to your house and takes your pee and blood. Yeah, that happened. And I did it. And I didn't pass out during my blood test, which was extremely exciting. Huge victory for me. What are the most important assets and debts your loved one should know about? Ugh. My gajillion dollars of student loan debt, I guess. Um, hopefully I'll pay my credit card off before I die. That's like a, that's a big goal. My assets though, I mean, hopefully my butt will still look good. That was a bad joke. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, what should happen to your pets if you can no longer take care of them? Oh my God. I know Mr. would be okay. He has a lot of people who love him, but he has very specific food needs. So I'm going to write out very detailed instructions on how to give him his food. I'm sure he will love whoever's feeding him. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry and I feel like I've definitely hit a wall with this, which is okay. It opened up a lot of boxes in my brain. I didn't even get to the funeral part. What do you want the mood to be at your funeral? <laughs> um, contemplative. <laughs> I don't think I want to tell anyone what the mood should be at my funeral. You can pick your own mood. It's become pretty apparent to me and probably to you that I'm not going to finish all these documents today, but let's all give ourselves credit for taking a step, shall we? Is that applause? Yes. If there's anything you can take away from this episode, I hope it's that you look up Caitlin Doty videos and maybe that you examine your own worries about death and uh, just nibble on a little slice of that worry pizza and take a little tiny baby step toward acceptance or peace, calmness. I used to think that having good mental health meant that you didn't have any anxieties or worries or bad thoughts. But I've come to realize that actually good mental health means you just know how to manage that negative stuff. So this has been a look into how I'm managing my fears about death. Just uh, taking a little bit of control where I can. And I hope that maybe it helped you a little bit. With what? I don't know. <laughs> I talked about pizza a lot. Did it make you want pizza? Let's do a very quick how I'm coping. This week, I've been coping by tracing things. I have been tracing art and then coloring it, and it feels great. It makes me feel like a really good artist. Sometimes I add my own little twist to it, but I highly recommend. I do that thing. I'll print out an image, and then I'll like rub pencil all over the back of it, and then I trace it onto a piece of paper, and then... I get this like faint outline, so then I draw over it and it feels like I'm drawing it. So I'm basically lying to myself about my artistic talents, but that feels good right now. So we've reached the end. It's also been absolutely incredible and amazing to read your messages about the past few episodes. I feel way less alone about being afraid of movies. I'm just floored. And I can't tell you how thankful I am that some of you have faced fears that you still have to send me clips of movies that scare you from the depths of my heart. Thank you so much. It's time to get a little cheesy, a little mozzarella cheesy on you. But it's been so wonderful to be able to connect with you through this podcast. For years, I've been making videos that are like three minutes long. And while that's so fun and wonderful, this more long form kind of conversation we've been having feels really good right now. And I so appreciate you being here. I'm not crying. I'm just hungry, okay? I'm, I'm just hungry. I'm going to go have a yogurt. Actually, okay, so here's what I've been doing. I take a yogurt and then I put pecans because apparently we have pecans and chocolate chips in it. It's incredible. I should name it. I should sell it. Maybe I should edit this out so no one steals my idea. But if you're in the yogurt industry and you want to collab, just, you know, let me know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go eat a yogurt and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope the rest of your day is the equivalent of yogurt. 
with pecans and chocolate chips. That's my dream for you. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye. Sobcast the podcast was created and hosted by Christina Wolfgram. Editing by the magical Jordan McKittrick. Produced by the incredible Stephanie Kent. Special thanks to my mom and dad. Just cause. <laughs>